Hello and welcome to another episode of Mellow Labs. On today's episode, we're building a droid from Star Wars, brought to you by Patreon. If you follow me on any other platforms, you might already know that I volunteered for the Star Wars celebration this year, and it was amazing. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars, I'm more of a this kind of person, but Star Wars does have much better droids. If anyone from the Star Wars celebration is watching, hi, I was the person guiding people into the Star Wars celebration stage. It's kind of weird thinking about it now because my audience is now almost as big as the amount of people in that auditorium. Please don't ever ask me to stand on a stage with that many people in front of me. I will have a panic attack. So because I'm not a Star Wars person and because I don't have any disposable income, uh, I ended up hanging around the droid builders for like the entire time I was there, talking about their droids and how cool their droids are and how they've designed them, and how they've built them, and how they've programmed them. I have spent hours, and it wasn't until the whole show finished that I realized, hey, this would have been good content if I recorded it. I literally sat on the floor with a droid builder, and we talked about his bot for like an hour and a half. And then my emotional support person got hungry, so we went to get food. But I kind of went psych, and I dragged her to a different room, where I talked about a different droid with a different builder for like another two hours. I'm so sorry to my emotional support person. <laughs> I was having fun. She was bored as hell. <laughs> it was there that I found the most adorable droid I have ever seen. Look at him. Look at how fucking cute he is. I wanted to steal him. Unfortunately, I found out the droid maker was a man named Michael. And Michael was much bigger than me. So instead, I took his business card because I found out that he shares all of his models on Patreon. So now that you know the backstory, let's go make it. To start off with, I went to Michael's Patreon. Oh, no, wait, that's mine. I went to Michael's Patreon and I subscribed. Kind of have to scroll down and like find the models you're looking for. His file structure is a little bit too confusing for me, but I am a smooth brain. Eventually, you'll end up with a 3D model of the droid you want. Look at him, he's so adorable. Who's a cute little droid? Use a cute little droid. I should really rethink my life decisions. But look at how cute he is. I'm sure there's a PDF somewhere on his Patreon documenting the electronics, but uh, I couldn't be bothered to find them, so instead I went to his YouTube channel. Check it out, it's quite interesting. It's very long form content and it can drag on a bit, but it's very interesting. Which led me to this video, which is just Michael assembling one of these little droids for a whole 17 minutes at a whole 1480p. This video strained my eyes. From this video, I extracted the electrical components that Michael is using to put together his droid. And I think Michael has too many Patreon supporters. Michael uses these continuous servos that cost 25 pounds. He uses this six volt battery pack for 17 pounds. And to finish it off, he uses this FlySky controller for 87 pounds. I don't have this much money, so we will be taking creative liberties. Instead of this fancy pants controller, we will be using a D1 Mini with a web interface. Instead of using this battery, we will be using this battery that I have recycled from an old battery bank. And instead of these fancy continuous servos, we will be using regular servos that we will modify to be continuous. Hey, can you modify these for me? Oh, uh, please stop throwing things at me, it's very annoying. Also, yes I can. First, we need to discuss the difference between these three 9 gram servos, because there is a difference. First is this 9 gram Tower Pro micro servo, and in most cases, they work completely fine. But unfortunately, they won't work for us. We'll discuss that in a second. Next is this MG90S micro servo, and you'd think it'd be higher quality because it's got metal gears and everything, but unfortunately it has the same problem as this Tower Pro one. And the problem lies with this potentiometer here. The potentiometer is there to tell the servo where it is in the rotation, and unfortunately these ones are pretty cheap and crappy. They end up drifting pretty quickly after you set them up, and they don't hold position very accurately. I tried converting a few of these servos and it just doesn't work. They end up jumping from one side to the other, like me after I've had too much sugar, so I just can't recommend this mod for these servos. Now, let's get to the ones we can use. This one is the amazingly named DXW90 9g servo. They use a black potentiometer, 
and the PCB board is also different. It's easier to tell when I'm holding them side by side. This is the good one. Now that we've got the servo we want to use, let's rip it to shreds. First, we want to remove all of the screws. My electric screwdriver broke, so I have to do this manually. And now you want to remember the position of all of these. I've already forgotten it. Now you want to pull out the circuit board. And now we just want to clip those wires. Just like that. I'm going to grab my soldering iron and some helping hands to uh, take these off. Desolder these wires. Keep a hold of one of the wires and strip the end. We're just going to tin this one a little. And we're going to solder it across the three parts that we just removed the wires from. And that's it for the electronics. We can just shove this back in here and put the back side on. And this is where we encounter problem number two. You see this potentiometer is actually used to keep the gears in place. The problem is the potentiometer only goes about a hundred and uh, what is this 190 degrees maybe so what we have to do is get rid of this d-shaped hole that's in this gear and we can do that with this little drill bit and now it should spin freely on top of this potentiometer we can start piecing it together little gear other little gear the slightly bigger gear the biggest gear and now we can put the top shell back on and let's screw it back together and it's done and now that you've got two modified servos, we can continue with the project. Here you go, butt face. Oh, um, thank you. I did have to edit the model a little bit. To start with, I didn't have the exact sized ball bearings that Michael used, so instead I edited the model to fit the ones I do have. Second, I had to edit the wheels so that they fit the servo attachment that I have. Same with this gear on top here that spins the head. And lastly, I edited this decorative belly button to be a secret switch. With all of those changes complete, it's time to print it out. Everything is printed, so let's start putting it together. There are a couple parts that Michael doesn't actually show you how to put together in his video, so uh, I'm gonna have to make some assumptions, like this. I assume this just glues on here. So uh, let me get super glue. Okay, let's super glue on, and I'm gonna give this a couple turns. And uh, oh, shit, it's covered in glue. How am I supposed to? Yep, classic me do first ask questions later that's straight ish it's gonna need a little bit of sanding to get rid of this sharp edge that I've created but it should be fine I should mention Michael is incredibly good at designing things to print without any supports there wasn't a single support in all of these prints there are tons of little details here that I thought weren't gonna print properly but they printed without a single problem like for example, this entire body part prints like this and all of this up here is just bridging. I didn't know my printer could do this. Second example is on the face. For example, he's got these little knobs here that I thought weren't gonna print very well or they weren't gonna look well, but Michael placed these little triangles at the bottom to support it as it's printing and they turned out great. There is so much to learn from these prints. Another thing Michael does is play around with orientation, like for example, this piece. I thought it was gonna print like this, and I was like experimenting with it printing like this because I didn't see how it does these overhangs, but he prints it like this, and it comes out completely fine. Why is Michael this smart? Why am I not this smart? Where does one obtain this 3D modeling knowledge? Skillsh- no, I'm not sponsored. I'm not sponsored. It would have been a great, it would have been a great transition, but I'm not sponsored. <laughs> Support me on Patreon. <laughs> let's move all of this aside and let's put together the front caster. So we need to put this in here and then that screws into this. Like that, I think. So we need to put a screw in through here all the way into here. I'm gonna be putting this together with screws that I've taken out of many different things over the years. There's about two print, no, there's actually four printers in here, like two hoovers and loads of other stuff. If there's a screw lying around, it's probably gonna end up here. Always save the screws. So we can take this screw, which looks pretty good for this. 
I think that's from a VCR. Very nice. Now we need the little ball bearing and we can squeeze that in here. Eh, close enough. Another thing I slightly adapted was this. Michael has a hole in here for a tiny, tiny ball bearing. Uh, I changed it so that the hole is smaller so that I don't have to use a ball bearing. Instead, it's just going to spin on the screw. I realized this is probably not a good long-term solution, but it will work for now. Another thing I would never have come up with when modeling, to print this awkwardly shaped caster thing, Michael has just like cut out a part of this so that it sticks down to the build plate like that and it prints perfectly upwards. So smart, so smart. And that should just pop in here. And we have a little caster. Woohoo, go little caster. And then this caster should just fit into the body here. That's actually a really good friction fit. Do I even need to screw, there is a screw hole here. But do I need to screw it in? Can I save myself a screw and just not screw it in? First thing I want to install into this body is my little switch. So I've made this little switch holder and I'm using these little crappy cheapo switches and I'm using just quick connect pin headers on this end so I can feed them through here and the button sits in here nicely. And now I've got this piece that sits on the front of the switch. Uh, I'm actually gonna glue this onto the switch and with a little bit of That will not move. And now with great difficulty, I need to put this inside here. Now, if I was smart, I would attach it with a screw coming in from the bottom. But as we all know, I'm not smart. I just work really, really hard to prove I'm not dumb. Uh, I touched the glue. How's that working out for me? Stay there. And there it is, a little working button. It does stick out a little bit, but considering he's going to be facing upwards and there's going to be a bunch of legs and stuff here, you won't really notice it that much. I guess the next thing to do is put together the legs. So we'll need our two modified servos. We need to put the servo holders onto the wheels first with some glue. I'm using a very liberal amount of glue. Uh, oh no, it's stuck to my desk. Now let's put the servos on the little carriages. Now, I I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm assuming in, wait. Okay, so it can go like this because this foot part doesn't fit in. If servo go here, foot part no fit. But how cable find its way here? So the servo cable goes in here. Oh God, Michael, why are you so smart? Look, look, he, he, he rounded off the, the inside edge of this so that when you put the wire in, it, it pokes itself up. I wouldn't have done this. I would have struggled with like a pair of tweezers for half an hour. Why do I feel like I'm missing something very, very obvious? Cause like this can't go here because then this thing won't go all the way in. I have completed one leg. It took me a while because uh, I am deadly allergic to documentation that would have told me how to do all of this. But instead, I burn the instruction manual and figure out how to put things together myself. So now I can walk you through how to put together the other leg. First, you take your servo and you take your motor mount and they go together like this. You want the, the cable coming out of the opposite side where this little, this little notch thing is. And now you wanna screw the servo in. Now you want the servo cable to be tacked nicely behind the servo so that it comes out on the other side and it fits in nicely just there. Now we want to screw in our wheel like that. Now you want to glue on the wheel because it's not going to hold together because this one's kind of fucked up. I will say I would not fully recommend this servo mod. It's going to work but uh, it's just kind of janky and the wheels like to wiggle a lot. Now that we've got the servo mounted to this and the wheel mounted to the servo, the cable goes in here and it pops out the other side and now that you've got your cable going through here like that you can screw it in through the top and now we can put the uh, the battery box thing in here like that this attaches with two screws down here and now we have two working legs look at them go 
Another thing I'm changing from Michael's design is I'm not using a continuous servo for the top of the head uh, because I don't need his head to spin all the way around. I'm using a regular servo, so he's only going to have about that much movement, but I think that's plenty. So again, we're starting off by gluing the servo attachment to the gear part like a glove. Now I know what you're thinking, Thomas, what are you doing with those edges that stick out? Clearly they'll be in the way. Yes, they will be. That's why I'm cutting them off. Now the servo can go into its little holder here. And now this is going to be a little bit tricky because this has to go in here. And now this part has to go in here like that. And it screws in from the top. <laughs> Now we can attach the gear to the servo. Theoretically, that should just, wait. How does, I have clearly missed something because I don't know how this attaches to this. Um, I will improvise. Okay, so here's my idea. This screw will go in through here, like so, like that. And this nut will go on the screw like that that's gonna work okay so now this screw is sticking out here and now if i just do that i'm gonna put a mark on this gear so that i know that this bit needs to be facing forwards for the servo to be exactly 50 50. so now when i put this on it should be exactly 50 that way 50 that way. Yeah. Okay, let's put the legs on. So in the video, Michael uses some grip screws to uh, to put in there so that they sort of stay in place. Uh, I have grip screws, but I don't want to use my grip screws for this. So instead, we will be using a toothpick. And I'm going to hold it in place with some glue. That's perfect. And now, we screw that in. Yeah, that holds on there. Cool. Now this one. Glue. Now cable goes in here. This goes in here. Will a wood screw work? Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. Now we need to uh, put this front thing on. Awesome. Oh, it's coming together. Let's let's put the head on. Awesome. Oh, he's so adorable. Oh, he's too cute. He is too cute. Look at him. Oh, look at my little baby boy. Okay, final touches. I need to get rid of the sharp line and I need to put electronics in him. So it's been a couple hours. Uh, I've managed to do all of the electronics and all of the programming. It's still like rough, but it works. I made a breakout board for the D1 Mini. It's very simple. It, you could do this with jumper wires, but I just want it to be a bit cleaner. Also, I enjoy making these for some reason. All it is is three connectors for the three servos and one connector for the power. I do also have an extra slot here for an RGB LED. I've not programmed it yet, but the idea is that I turn it on and then I can tell what state the microprocessor is in depending on what color the LED is. So I can push all of this in here along with the battery. The battery does have a management system on it so that I can charge it easily. I'll have affiliate links to all the parts I've used in the description. And then I can pop the head on. And then I can click my sneaky little on button. I've got a very basic weapon to face for it where I can go left, right, forwards, backwards. It's a little bit delayed, but it works. I can also turn the, uh, the head servo this also is not great. I don't like how that works. I don't like this web interface. This is very jumpy. This is very laggy. It's just, it, it works, but like just enough. So I actually have a different plan for this. So I made a remote. It's very basic. It's a Raspberry Pi Pico W, a 18650 battery, uh, an on and off switch, and one of those thumbstick controllers in a 3D printed case. I really wanted to use the D1 Mini, but the D1 Mini only has one analog input pin. So I went with the Pico W. The way these two communicate is over Wi-Fi. This guy opens up a hotspot. This guy connects to the hotspot. 
and then it sends a stream of information over the UDP protocol that just tells them what the joystick is doing. And just like that, I can control it. It has the added benefit of him not having to be connected to my home Wi-Fi, so I can actually take him outside. It's pretty obvious how I've got him configured. I've got backwards, forwards, left, right, and then when I hold down the button and then tilt left and right, I can control his head. And that works pretty much perfectly. I am going to eventually upgrade the battery that's inside of him. He's currently running a 3.7 volt battery, which is causing him to move really slowly. So I'm probably gonna upgrade it to something in the five volt region. I'm just not sure what yet. And to answer your final question, yes, he will be painted. Not by me, my partner will be painting him. So uh, follow her on Instagram, link in the description, and I'm sure she'll post in progress updates. To finish off, if you enjoy what I do here, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. It helps me out tremendously. In return, you get work in progress, you get Patreon exclusives, you get director's cuts of my videos, you get access to my Discord server where you can chat with me. Actually, I don't know if that's a good thing. Till next time, goodbye. He is now your problem.